do you have for a play offense or play full game? Entering team select screen the Chicago Bears the home team are selected. Ready. Today, from Soldier Field in Chicago, it's week 13 of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Mitchell Trubisky and the Chicago Bears taking on Matthew Stafford and the Detroit Lions. Well, they say an early season snowstorm may be on deck in less than 48 hours, but today is picture perfect fall football weather. Crisp and cool at Soldier Field in the Windy City. Just a short time ago, this crowd loud enough to shake the foundations of this nearly century-old building. They are ready for football indeed in Chicago as their guys get set to do battle with Matthew Stafford and the Detroit Lions. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And Charles, you look at this Bears team entering play. They come off a disappointment last time out that put an end to their modest three-game win streak. Meanwhile, for the Lions here, things haven't gone exactly according to plan to this point, but boy, you and I down there with them before the game, they were fired up. And they understand how important this game is. Win this one, they can start to think about a turnaround. the sun and he muffs it and he can't field it cleanly it's loose and able to get this across the 20 but not much further as he's dropped at the 23 yard line so here are the lions now coming out for their opening drive they'll be led out by their 32 year old quarterback from the university of georgia the 12 year vet matthew stafford and i'll bet right now it's just one thought in his mind Win, win the, the game. game. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. He played pretty well. I mean, he didn't turn over the ball in terms of interceptions, no, right? Two touchdown passes two last touchdown week. Two touchdown passes, but when your team doesn't win, that's just hollow. And the best quarterbacks don't care about anything but whether or not their team won. A first carry now. This is Johnson. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Defensively here, you're facing a top-five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high-powered, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20 because, to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. I think so because then you turn it into a shootout, and that means your offense has to keep pace. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. A three the goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing round. Third play here this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. Out of the gun, Stafford. He rifles one that's intercepted. 
Picked off by Buster Screen. And he will score. Touchdown, Chicago. Buster Screen. Touchdown, Bears. When it was third down defensively, they were just hoping to make a play and get off the field, get their offense on. Instead, they did one better. Pick it off, take it into the end zone. Well, they did what you said. They got they off did the get field. Off. They're going to have to come right back on. They're going to come right back on, but happily, right? They put the ball in the end zone. That's the way you start a game. That's the way you set the tone. Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point. And he's got it to make it 7-0 in favor of the Bears. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Jamal Agnew now to return it. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And they got to be pleased with this. He brings it all the way up to the 40-yard line. Well, he gave up the first touchdown of the game, but how about the response? Big time return. Now it's their chance to try and put points on the board. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at the 40. Stafford here coming off his pick six. That's caught by the big tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. Complete. These are his numbers from last week's contest. Five catches, 73 yards. This defense is ranked near the bottom of the league against the pass. You get the sense that he feels like if he gets covered on any call, He's going to be upset. He thinks he should be open on every snap in this game. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Running from the gun, Johnson. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. To throw is Stafford. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. First down, Stafford here. Going right side here, and that's complete. 
And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. Another first down as he went right back to the same well, this time for 17 yards. First down. Well, we can talk about it like it's just a basic route, but how about the timing on this one? Lined up on the right, runs a deep in route, and how about the throw? Right on the money. Bam! Puts it right in there and on his hands. Nice completion. Really good pickup. down carry here for Johnson and he's going to take this one down to about the 23 yard line two yards on the pick up there it'll be second and eight he was right certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield their job is to go ahead and get low almost get into a ball sometimes stack things up and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole Ball at the 23, second and eight. Now Stafford. Little short pass to James. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. I was not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Stafford looking to throw on third and one. Brings up fourth down. Solid coverage by the Bears D. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. Signs of the field goal unit. They're going to become a famous. Do me for hours. PRM as in Dubai Wurzel and URL. Bigfellows.com. They snap it to Stafford. That's complete right around the eight. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pickup through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal. again as Stafford and almost intercepted it would have been his second pick of the game instead it'll be second down one thing that you're going to see from this offense is that they love the matchup with their wide receivers against this secondary that one wasn't successful but don't expect them to back away from attacking all game long nothing on first down so the ball remains at the eight yard line second and goal check, check. <laughs> Stafford looks to throw again. His pass caught at the four. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Five yards that time on the completion. And now it's third and goal. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Yeah, boy, from up here, I don't think Johnson got there. No, he did not. Only a yard that time, so now a decision to be made here on fourth and goal. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation.
So on fourth down, the Lions turn it over to Matt Prater for the field goal try. Less than an extra point attempt here. This is an 18-yarder. And the 13-year man puts it through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So a dozen plays on that drive, CD, but in the end, it yields just the three points. Well, they were able to keep the defense on the field for a long time, but let's be honest about it. That was about as unsatisfying a drive as you're going to get. 12 plays and you only get three points out of it. Not quite the ending they were looking for. Taken about seven yards deep. And Patterson will not return it. It comes out to the 25. The Bears getting the football here offensively, and the man in charge at QB in his fourth year now from North Carolina, Mitchell Trubisky. And while he won't admit it because his team lost the game, he had some fun in the last one. He I threw mean, for over 400 yards. I mean, there's no getting around it. As a QB, yeah, okay. We lost the game, but boy, that felt good flinging it around. Now he's got to figure out how to do the exact same thing, yet turn it into a win. Now Trubisky on first down, and this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone, and there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. They will run for the first time with David Montgomery. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. And the Lions going with an extra DB here on third down. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And Robinson with a big catch. And he will have a first down as they get into the ground at the 37. A Chicago first down, the former Jag, Allen Robinson, on the catch from Trubisky. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Now Trubisky going to give this to Montgomery. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. The numbers on the ground for Montgomery in last week's affair. You see the numbers last week for Davis. In the end, not enough to help get him the victory. And as we look forward to this week, don't you just get the sense that he's going to get the ball a little bit more? I mean, that's just how it reads to me. I don't know how you're feeling about it. Well, they talked about that with us this week. That's going to be a priority for them. Give him the ball, let him do his thing. From the 39, Trubisky. He'll get that complete to his tight end, Cole Komet. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 43. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. First and 10 at the 40. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. On the carry, it's Montgomery. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. 
That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. The last run got six, now second and four. This is the receiver turned running back, Cordero Patterson, and brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 12 yards there and a first down. Well, they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. First and ten, it's Trubisky. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Throwing here, Trubisky. And it's caught. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. The Bears on the move. They've got another first down. Well, he did everything but get him in the end zone there, but now they're set up. Golden opportunity. Strong opening drive, and they're knocking on the door. And the way that they did it. Now, look where they are on the field. All right, this is naturally set up for a running play, isn't it? But with his ability to throw the football, his accuracy on this drive, you might want to think about a pass play in this situation. Hmm, interesting. Time to find out. From the gun, it's Trubisky. Got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. Jarnell Mooney, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Bears will extend their lead. Well, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. 
The return man, Ty Johnson. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at the 34. Off play action, he'll throw to start the drive. And his throw here is incomplete. He was trying to find Marvin Jones that time. And that'll bring up second down. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. To throw again. Stafford. Screenplay. Johnson. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. Now I think we're going to get a timeout here. Yes, a timeout here as it looks like we've got a lion that's shaken up. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. The last catch nearly got him a first, but it did not, and they'll try to convert on third and inches. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson, and he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter. And a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. Now on the heels of that run by Johnson, here's another first and 10. Faking the give to Johnson, now it's Stafford. And that is incomplete. Stafford. So much for the best laid plans and best designed plays. That was good coverage along the sidelines. No place for that one to get in there. It sails incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Throwing again. Stafford. This one complete to his fullback out of the backfield. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 35. 11 yards there. First down. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks, but it doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there, and there we saw a completion. Stafford throwing complete there to Amendola, and brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Same exact result as last play, a pickup of 11. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They'll fake the give. Now Stafford. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Danny Trevathan. The blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. They just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And yeah, just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe a back, someone to help assist, because right now, the quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games.
So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Throwing at Stafford. Looking downfield for Jones. And to the 12. That's where it stops. The return is halted at the 12-yard line. First quarter, and now he already has two interceptions. Yeah, he's got to guard against being tentative from this point forward, though. He's got to still make the right reads, make the proper throws. I've seen guys in this league throw four interceptions in a game and win. He's got to understand, put it behind you, keep pressing forward. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look close. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Trubisky will throw and quickly into the hands of Robinson. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Seven yards there at a first down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. Credit the tackle that time to Deshaun Hand. Well, obviously, they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead, now, they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. Behind the chain, second and 13. Here's Trubisky to throw, and he slings one that's incomplete. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver, and it's third down. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, Trubisky. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. The Bears on the move. They've got another first down. A pretty sizable deficit here in the first quarter. This defense will probably need to get off the field in those situations on third down. And you and I both know in this huddle before that last third down play, that's exactly what they talked about. Let's make a play. Let's get off the field. Let's reverse the momentum. Instead, they got hit with another first down, almost back to the drawing board. A couple of first downs have them to the 40 now on first and 10. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. 
Now I think we're going to get a timeout here. Yes, a timeout here as it looks like we've got a lion that's shaken up. We'll check on his status when we get back. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. On second down, Montgomery. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 11 yards there, first down. First down 10 at the 45-yard line. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. After one, a 14-3 ball game. Bears 14, Lions 3. First down, it's Montgomery. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Watch the run, watch the run. Right there, 54, right there, right there. 54, Mike. Hey, ball, 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 ball. Now they'll throw it with Trubisky. And he's going to go down. Back near midfield at the 49. Alec Ogletree able to record his fifth sack of the season. But nothing takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. After that sack we just saw, Trubisky and the Bears deal with a third and long. Now it's Trubisky. And the catch is made by Riley Ridley. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 34-yard line. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 34. Montgomery. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Ten more there and another first down. Nice game there by the second-year runner out of Iowa State, David Montgomery, who often finishes his runs moving forward and knocking defenders back. He finished tied with Josh Jacobs for most carries by a rookie last year. But what the Bears need from him, improve on his 3.7 yards per attempt. If he gets that up into the fours, look out. He can control the game with his running. First down, they run again. Here's Montgomery. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. He was 
Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd. From the 22, Trubisky, he'll get this underneath to Montgomery, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Out of the end zone. It's now second and 10. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Trubisky now off the bootleg. Blitz coming and down he goes. Christian Jones. The blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. After that sack we just saw, Trubisky and the Bears deal with a third and long. Now it's Trubisky. Middle of the field, it's Robinson. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. It's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. Nice job understanding the situation. Third and long, kept the play in front of them and made the tackle. They gave up a good chunk of yardage, but it does force a fourth down. is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. They'll try and throw for it with Trubisky. Now he's got it. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They get six yards going for it on fourth, and now it's first and goal. Well, the field that I get on this and that they felt like three was just not going to be enough after getting this deep into their territory. And Charles, correct me if I'm wrong, but it didn't even look like they hesitated there. They knew they wanted to go for it. That tells me that during the week, they were thinking about these situations, and they feel like maybe they're just the better team, and they want to go ahead and prove it conclusively. A play fake to Montgomery. Now Trubisky to the end zone, but it's incomplete. He was looking for his rookie Cole Komet that time, but it'll be second and goal. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. An incomplete pass on first out. Here's second and goal. Throwing once more, it's Trubisky. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. Christian Jones able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? 
That's three sacks now. And this team came into the game in the bottom five in the league in sacks. Yeah, this What's is going not, on? It's not been their bread and butter. I don't know. Is a blind squirrel finding a nut, or is it something they can build on? Well, they found some momentum. They found a crack in that offensive line, and they're putting it to good use. On third and goal, Trubisky. Detroit was up for the challenge through the air. They force a fourth down. Incomplete. Out of the end zone. It's now fourth down and goal. The offense stays out there. A big challenge here from this far back, but they're going for it on fourth and goal. Here's Trubisky. And he's got his man. That's Robinson. Touchdown, Bears. And Allen Robinson, his 14th touchdown now of the year. And the Bears will add on to their lead. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down? And, oh, okay, forget the field goal, because that looked like an easy three points. Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And, oh, it's no good on the PAT, so they can't add on here. And our score is going to stay right where it is. Eddie Pinheiro to kick off for Chicago. So with the missed PAT in his rearview mirror, he goes back out to kick this one off. To return, here's Agnew. Oh, a good-looking return set up here. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Detroit's offense ready to take over. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at the 33-yard line. A little jet sweep to start the drive. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. No gain on the play. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. Here's second and ten. A shotgun snap for Stafford. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. The Lions on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and ten. From the gun, here's Stafford. Got a man, it's Amendola. He'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. First down for the Lions on a nice pickup of 18 yards. 
And the line. How about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. Stafford on first down. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Eight yards on the pickup. Brandon, they didn't get everything they wanted out of that play, but the tight end did. <laughs> and I don't mean it in a positive way. Great job of him holding on after absorbing that big hit. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Stafford going to give this one off to Johnson. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Two yards, good enough for a first. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now Stafford. That's to his running back, carry on Johnson. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard and it's second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting and they stopped him for a minimal game. 38 yard line, second and nine. Out of the gun, Stafford. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 27-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they're having panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Pass from Stafford, caught by Amendola. A gain of six there on first. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Throwing again at Stafford. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there. Tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. The Lions on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and four. Stafford looks to throw again. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. And they'll get this down to the 10. Stafford to his second year tight end, Hawkinson, for a Lion first down. TJ Hawkinson. Well, a lot of times when you get a manageable third down situation like this, you have to think about your tight end, and he comes through for him, picking up the first down. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. They'll run on first down. It's Johnson. Stafford hands to carry on Johnson. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. On second and seven. 
Stafford, his pass caught at the four. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. The Lions on third down. They've hit four and seven. Here it's third and two. On the ground, this is Johnson. Oh, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. With the way things have gone in this game, I think they've got to consider going for it here. I realize it's just the second quarter, so they're not panicking, but they need something to give them positive momentum to get things going. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. This a chip shot, a 20-yarder. And Prater's kick is on the money. It's good. And that will close the gap down to 14. Lion six. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It's not like you're going negative on me I, there, was, I was. I was. Like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. 25-yard line. Now Allen Robinson and company gearing up to go again on offense. For him, what an accomplishment in this game, surpassing the 2,000-yard mark. And all the time we talk about these guys out wide like him that are so athletic and can do so many things. But take us a little deeper. How has he done it this year? Well, you helped with this because when we sat down with him before the game and, and discussed his season, and you said to him, okay, I have a vision that you, similar to a pitcher, change up a lot of things, right? Different arm angles, different slots that a pitcher would do. You do that with your route running and all that. And I loved his response. He said, yeah, I do that. But one of his best friends is a world-ranked tennis player. And he talked about serves and how you change up, take pace off, do different things. And he incorporated that into his route running. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. And under the Lions' pressure, he's brought down. Alec Ogletree in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. Well, maybe that can give him a little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a jolt. One of the few things has gone right defensively. Because other than that, it's really been a first half to forget. The Bears on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and nine. Mike by four, Mike by four, Mike by four. Here we go. Check, cross. Hey, ball, 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 ball. Yes. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And Robinson with a big catch. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. A first down and then some. Give him 29 yards. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep with the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. And we've got movement. I think this is against the Bears here. Let's find out. Offense. 
Maybe anticipating a blitz, and they jumped. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on that play. Had to pick them up, and they jumped. And he's got some space here. Yeah, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. That burst good for 20 and a first down. We might know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. First and 10 at the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. And he's going to go down here, a sack. They push him back to the 34. Jalen reeves Maben able to take him down. It's a loss of three. And here the pressure from the outside linebacking spot. And normally when that happens and they're able to get home, that means the other guys on his team helped him out a lot. That they occupied people to allow it to be no less than a one-on-one -on -one situation allows him to get home. So second and long and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one close quickly and helped force the incompletion. The Bears on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is going to be third and 13. Now Trubisky to throw. Space to run past the 20. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And finally wrestled down at the 8-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That catch now puts him on the doorstep of 500. It's his 499th reception. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. And he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. A good run on first down, and now they contemplate a second-and-goal situation. A lot to praise on this drive, obviously. I, I know you're seeing what I'm seeing. Those guys up front, they're getting it done. Doesn't matter what play is called. They are handling their business at the line of scrimmage and dominating right now on this drive. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second-and-goal? Now Trubisky, and that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. Three touchdown passes now for Mitchell Trubisky as the Bears push further out in front. A lot of people might call this backyard football. Sometimes just understanding who you've got out wide and who you're going to throw it to. Give him an opportunity to go up and make a play even when contested. Looks like that one worked out pretty well. The trust factor in effect. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. That time a nine-play drive. And the end result is a Bears touchdown.
Pinheiro to kick off for Chicago. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. To return, here's Agnew. Well, a dangerous return man showing it here. Jamal Agnew on the return. The Lions take over first and 10. And Detroit getting set to go now. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here's Stafford. Screenplay, Johnson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. From the gun, Stafford. He's got his tight end over the middle, T.J. Hawkinson. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. and 10 Stafford completing it to the right side Johnson Stafford. and he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight seven brings up looks like a pretty good safe play right there no he's had trouble with the interceptions in this game there hits his guy out in the flat yeah so many times we hear quarterbacks and offensive coordinators talk about in your progressions you're either throwing the touchdown or you're throwing the check down but earlier in the game, it was touchdown or interception. Now he got to the check down. A nice safe throw and a good one. It's a first down on a game of 10. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. Now a signal and a timeout call. As it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. To the air again, Stafford. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Intended for Jamal Agnew. Incomplete. Coverage on the play by Kyle Fuller. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as he'll try to get three before half. Prater's kick is good. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. Lions nine. Well, not the best first half facing this deficit, but at least they did put three on the board before half. Yeah, it's a little bit like that stormy, cloudy day and the sun peeks through just for a second. They saw the sun there. They're hoping to see a little bit more of it in the second half. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. We're starting to get near the home stretch of this NFL season. It's week 13, so let's get an update on what's going on.
We'll begin up at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. And it's the Jaguars who have the lead in the second quarter. Keelan Cole, a touchdown reception. From there, we head down south to Atlanta to check on the Falcons at home at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And for the moment, they trail the visiting Saints in that one. Two touchdown passes there for the venerable one, Drew Brees. Finally, let's get to the country music capital of the world and see what's happening with the Titans at home in Nashville. And they've gone to the half in that ball game with the visiting Browns out on top. Kaderil Hodge, a touchdown catch in that first half. In our game, it's been Mitchell Trubisky, who's looked sharp thus far. His three touchdown passes have his guys out in front as we hand things back over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Set to resume. Here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. Now it's Patterson. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Bears Mitchell Trubisky on his way out. The subject of our players' spotlight. What can they do now, Charles, to make sure this highlight montage doesn't continue to show more pressure and pressure and pressure? You feel like it always comes back to leverage, don't you? Who is going to win that battle of the offensive and defensive lines? Low man wins. We talk about that, but we think about it in a running game. But guess what? The same thing happens when you're trying to pass protect. Are you low? Are you balanced? Are you in a position where the pass rush won't bowl you over on their way back to the quarterback? They've got to reestablish that in order to try and keep their man upright. As they have been bowled over a lot so far in this one. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. From the 30 on second down, Trubisky. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. Deshaun Hand able to record his fifth sack of the season. They need to stop to get back into this game, and here's one right to start the third quarter. Yeah, anytime you go to the lockers with that two, three score deficit, you're right. You need that stop, get the football back, and they've done just that. Series to series, play to play. After that sack we just saw, Trubisky and the Bears deal with a third and long. Out of the gun, Trubisky. Got a man, it's Patterson complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. Frankly, I don't know that this defense knows what to do anymore. Just look at their body language out there. The passing game has absolutely been relentless throughout. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Right there, 54, right there, right there, 54 Mike. You got enough? Move, move, move. Switch it, switch it, switch it, switch it. A shotgun handoff to Patterson. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Six man. Check cross, check cross, check cross. Mike by four, Mike by four. Ran, ran, up. Ran, ran, up. Under two. 
Back to the ground, this time Montgomery. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Four yards the pick up, first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here we go, D. Hey, it's, just, it's, just, it's just me and you. It's just me and you. A lot of work. A lot of work. Trubisky now off the bootleg. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Well, they found him eight times in that first half, and this is his first catch of quarter number three. And he has now hit number 500. Charles, that is his 500th NFL career catch. Definitely worthy of applause, but I remember when 500 meant you were going to the Hall of Fame. Nowadays, in today's football, 500 puts you on the path, a significant number. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. They run Montgomery. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Now with just one second showing on the play clock, we're going to get a timeout. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. It's a 10-yard gain there to set him up first and goal. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've run the bell three times with passing touchdowns. But guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Throwing here, Trubisky. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action, maybe throwing it. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Now it's Trubisky. Open man, he finds Komet. Touchdown, Chicago. Cole Komet with his first career NFL touchdown. And the Bears will extend their lead. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Trubisky will lead the Bears up to go for two. Trubisky will throw. And this is going to be caught. It's good. And that extends their lead by two more. <laughs> I 
think this is just going to be a function of the times we live in now. Very similar to the bat flip in baseball. Everyone's got to start to get comfortable with this. But to me, this is just rubbing it in. You got a big lead. Go ahead and take the extra point. One thing to keep in mind, though, karma's still out there. And sometimes it has a way of catching up with you. Eddie Pinheiro to kick off for Chicago. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. To return, here's Agnew. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. At their own 30. So we get a look at the Lions offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Now a first down throw. Stafford throwing middle, but it's incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed always different no matter what you do in practice you can't simulate it right so your decision making everything has to be a little bit quicker sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust second and 10 from the 33 yard line to throw again stafford over the middle and it's incomplete well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he will score! Touchdown, Chicago! It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. Eddie Pinheiro to kick off for Chicago. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. To return, here's Agnew. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. First and 10 at their own 32-yard line. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And they gave up the pick six, and now they'll be looking to right the ship here. Now, as a quarterback, are you a little more cautious this go-around? You should be, just because after what you gave up. But you can't be so cautious as to just really take things in, and now you're not going to play loose enough to give your team a chance to score. But you still have to be careful, because those defensive guys, I know the reputation defense guys can't catch. 
All evidence to the contrary on that last possession, though. <laughs> They'll try to get the offense going with Johnson. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. Two yards the loss, second and 12. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Yard line, second and 12. Now it's Stafford. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. Terrell Suggs make that now eight sacks for him on the season. So one quick, easy analysis about why they struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. After the sack, Stafford and the Lions come up on a third and long situation. From the gun, here's Stafford. Going to throw right side here, complete. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. There's another example of what defensive coaches constantly preach, not allowing any run after the catch. They give up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. Here's Matt Bosher now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Bears take over. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. They've really distanced themselves. They have put the pedal to the metal, I guess, so to speak. So definitely have them in the rearview mirror, don't they? I mean, you're exactly right. Being able to string together these drives that end up in points, it's almost like a run in basketball to create that distance, and they're on a really big time one right now. It becomes contagious, doesn't it? It absolutely does, because oftentimes it translates to your defense as well, because they're excited about getting the ball back for their offense that's playing so well. Well, they are clicking right now, and he'll push his way forward to about the 32. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Well, I think after that run, the defense getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? It's a party now. It's a party now. 44 is a mic. 44 is a mic. Check, check. Pick it up. Pick it up. Alert, alert. Alert, alert. Slam, slam, slam. Yes. Yes. Once more, they turn to Patterson. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 15 yards on the play, first down. All right, I got to ask you, with these RPOs, essentially the quarterback has three options, right? So what's different from that versus the triple option that we see the service academies run at the college level? As a general rule, the triple option at the college level, most things are called outside of the quarterback faking it to the runner and then keeping it himself and maybe having a trail back. What I mean is... In the NFL, that option to throw the football all comes about organically. It's a natural deal based on reads. In college, if you're going to throw the football off a triple option, you've actually called that play. Oh, he's got a little daylight. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Well, I certainly don't want to pile on, but this defense has just now been up to the challenge in this game, and this continues as we see here. Coverage, not been very good. Soft in spots. There's an easy throw and catch for another first down. Up. 
So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. On first down, it's Patterson, and not much running room. Down to the 32. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run pass option. You get the sense the next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They'll keep it on the ground. Patterson. And a pretty good run as he'll get this down close to a first at the Lions 26. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gun. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, Makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Heavy set out there on third and one. Coming for you, son. I'm coming for you, son. Watch that three. Watch that three. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. On third down, Trubisky. And yeah, this is caught, but I don't think he stayed in bounds. No, he didn't. It's incomplete. The throw took him past the boundary, and it's fourth. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. Eddie Pinheiro on now for the Bears. On the left hash, this from 48 yards. And this one is right down the middle. And they're sitting pretty now as the lead grows even further. Bears 45, Lions 9. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. And things were a little leaky in the beginning on that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to their goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. Eddie Pinheiro, the kickoff for Chicago. to the field goal on to kick it away is Pinheiro to return here's Agnew and he nearly broke that for more but as it is still a good return they'll start the drive right around the 37 take over first and 10 Detroit's offense ready to take over. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, <laughs> wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. I'm kind of glad we weren't in there at <laughs> time, actually. I mean, you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah, but right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Maybe a little frustration starting to creep in. The offensive line hasn't done a great job of protecting him in this game, and there he was, hit again as he threw it. Yeah, another time on his backside. Probably starting to get a little frustrated. Got to keep his composure. Can't let the defense know that they're getting to him. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Now a 10th carry for Johnson. And that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. Two yards the loss and now third and 12. I see a shake of the head as he gets up and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. 
He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Defensively, a dime look here. Six DBs on third and 12. No surprise at all. Operating from the gun. Stafford. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him. But still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Here's Matt Bosher now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Fighting through. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Back out onto the field comes Allen Robinson. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. They go play action here on first down. And under the Lions' pressure, he's brought down. Deshaun Hand in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. And that's the second sack of the game, but this player, disruptive in all phases, whether he's going upfield, coming underneath, you name it. He's a big-time guy you have to block. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Here's Trubisky, and he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Brings up third down and seven. They got the win last week despite not having any interceptions. Tried to come up with one there. Could not. But there's a stat category called PBU, pass breakup. That's important too. And they got one. Yeah, there's no doubt about it because at least you're there knocking the ball away, offense isn't possessing it, making plays downfield, and you just continue to harass the receivers, harass the quarterback, and maybe the big play does occur down the road. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Lions will take over. And Detroit getting set to go now. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just what you said. You've gone over the changes. I bet they were pretty clinical at the half, not too emotional. They might need to go to the emotional side <laughs> because you've got to find something, some spark somewhere. And so far, just being calm hasn't exactly worked. They need any spark at this point. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. Well, they certainly have been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. they got to just pin their ears back and get after him now. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Out of the gun, Stafford. Amendola catching it left side. It's a gain of six on the play, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. It's a gain of they like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, 
why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On third down, Johnson. And he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. Got what they needed there. The drive continues with a nine-yard pickup. Well, there's zero doubt that the Detroit Lions like on Johnson's ability, but he's been dinged up a little bit in his first two years in the NFL, so they went out and used a day-two pick this past year on DeAndre Swift, the rookie runner out of Georgia, hoping, I think, to pair them together and maybe send a message. But I think if on Johnson can stay on the field, he could be an awfully productive back in the NFL. down at Stafford. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 15 yards for the Lions there on a first down. Well, that was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 38. From the gun, Stafford. Quick hitter here, it's complete. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. To Jamal Agnew. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, Using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. On second down now, it's Johnson. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. They stay on the ground on first with Johnson. He's able to work free for about six down to the 18. Again, the ball carrier. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Stafford now to throw. And he will find his man on the outside. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. A first down carry here for Johnson. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Tough day. Tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Mike, Mike, check, check. 59, 59. Again, it's Johnson. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Four yards on the pick up there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for first. But if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Stafford. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Danny Trevino.
with Ethan, and he'll go down inside the 15 at his own 13-yard line. So their woes on offense continue. That's the second pick thrown here in the third quarter. And we know it was ill-advised, but that was an opportunity to help them get back into the game. Instead, he throws another interception, and now their task is even tougher. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. To Montgomery to begin the drive. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on the play. Brings up second and 10 at the 13-yard line. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Now Trubisky to throw on second. And this will be caught by Mooney. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 19 yards there on the catch and run. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this one. He's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him. Do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection. It doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now Trubisky going to give this to Montgomery. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. The tackle made there by Jared Davis. Jared Davis. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy. But they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Ball at the 33, second and nine. Hey, watch that, watch that. Check Mike 54. Mike 54. Run, run, up. Now it's Trubisky. Open man is Komet, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain there of 21 yards. Tell you what, partner, the way he's been slinging it in this one, I think he should be ticketed for a baseball cap and a set of headphones for the next drive. He's been absolutely sensational. But one thing we've both learned about quarterbacks in this league, they often stay on the field longer than you expect. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. A give to Montgomery out of the gun. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Keep pounding here with Montgomery. And he's taken down inside the 30. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
First down, here's the run with Montgomery. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. David Montgomery, touchdown number 15 of the year. As his guys continue to put this one out of reach. Even though they've got this big advantage, Charles, they are not taking their foot off the gas pedal right now. Well, I think what we're seeing is the result of all their great preparation and great practice time during the week. And even though it seems like this is a great chance to pull people back and maybe, you know, not try and score a few more times, they don't want to do that. I think they're enjoying what they're seeing, the collective effort, and they want to play it all the way out. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So the drive there took six plays. And it was David Montgomery's touchdown run that polished it all off. Your sense, guess who's here? Eddie Pinheiro to kick off for Chicago. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. Johnson now returning. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Defensively, you said coming in earlier in the broadcast, the magic number was 20 points for you. That's what you thought they would have to hold this offense to or, or less than that. And wow, they've done that in a big way, haven't they? Not only have they done it, they put themselves in a great position to win this one because holding them down was paramount. If they could get it done, well, guess what? We see the end result right now. Your sense got my Twitch name back. Leading here in the fourth. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at the 33-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. That's to his running back, on Johnson. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll make this a second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Able to get seven on that first down More since I just changed it, LOL. Second and three. It's going to be incomplete. Johnson was the intended receiver, and it's third and short. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Operating from the gun, Stafford. What are these people so good? Changing names, I guess. 48 yard line. Well, partner, I, I gotta tell you, I'm trying to think of something positive to say for this offense, but I'd have to be a spin doctor for that one. This has been a tough performance to watch. And I think it's hard at this point to actually identify what's really gone wrong. I guess the yeah, catch-all is everything. Doesn't sound like real sharp analysis, but I don't have much else for you. And the scoreboard just lopsided, and it's been ugly from the get-go. No. Your sense, it now matches my gamma dad. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 48. Check, check, watch. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And he's going to get it across the midfield stripe into Lion territory. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game. Trying to establish the inside run. Run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Come on, man. 
So that'll back him up five. On second down, here's Trubisky. Middle of the field, it's Robinson. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 11 yards there, first down. Well, there's your leading receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage, putting on another clinic well over 100 yards. Are we taking notes? We should be, right? Because I'm going to go back and watch this tape and really enjoy what I'm seeing, the route running, competing for the football, just breaking down a defense. first down. It's Patterson They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you're scrambling a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? From the 37, they work on second and six. On second down, Montgomery. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Soft through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. shy of the 10. Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. Brandon, every great running backs coach I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about run them into submission, uh, hasn't he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, hey, forward is Mike. Forward is Mike right there. Forward is Mike. Alert, alert. Alert, alert. Here we go. 49. Check 49. Check 49. Now a run with Montgomery. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Facing a second and six from the eight. 5 at the 6. Call it a gain of a yard and it's going to bring up 3rd and 5. He's hit pay dirt a lot this year but not that time. Yeah, I'm tracking right there with you. You're exactly right. He's found the end zone plenty of times. No way I can find any fault with the call. He may not have scored there. But of course you're going to give it to him. The Bears on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This will be third and five. Check pass, check pass. Watch the safety creep. 
set him back five delay of game penalty ships him back five yards makes it third and ten from the shotgun is Trubisky and he's got his man that's Robinson touchdown Bears Allen Robinson with touchdown number 15 on the year and second of the game as his guys continue to pour it on as that lead just swells and swells. Look, this has been dominance in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. So don't we have to give a lot of credit, not just to what we've seen today, but the preparation in advance, coaching staff, commitment by the players to the game plan, and being ready to go in this one? You're exactly right. Clean sweep. And boy, they're going to celebrate this one after it's over. And on the other side, this is the game film you just flush and never go back and review. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And it's no good. It has not been his day. That's the second extra point he's missed so far. Eddie Pinheiro to kick off for Chicago. Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. On the, return. the Lions take over first and 10. Another shot now for this Lions offense. And they unfortunately are staring at a mini losing streak developing, trailing here in the fourth quarter. This would be their third straight defeat. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10, just shy of the 30. Out of the gun, he'll throw. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. Khalil Mack in there for sack number 85 of his great career, moving him past Hall of Famer Howie Long on the all-time list. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. And on third and eight, defensively, they're going to beef up the secondary. Six defensive backs. To throw is Stafford. Screenplay, Johnson. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Detroit.
This will be fielded at the 17. So a good punt there, but a nice return of 11 yards. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. We find ourselves here in the midst of a one-sided affair. A lot, of, a lot of fill time down the stretch, Mr. Davis. So we could talk about food because that is something that you and I we, both we, enjoy. We share we, that. We enjoy our time at the table. So maybe the best steakhouses in the city, but <laughs> in all seriousness, the performances that we've seen this year, we've seen a bunch of great ones, and it's going to be hard to parse who's going to win the MVP. Yeah, it really is. Is it going to be a runner? Is it going to be a thrower? Can a defender finally win it this season? Those are the things that we could probably discuss. And collectively, this is about as dominant of a performance as you could have hoped for on both sides of the football. Might have to put it number one for what we've seen this season. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Montgomery. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. They get nine yards back on the run there, and they're left with a much more makeable third and two. Third and two. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. The Bears on third down. Now they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This time they face a third and two. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Not ideal there. That delay of game backs him up five yards, so now they need seven yards on third down. got movement. I think this is against the Bears here. Let's find out. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. From the gun on third down, it's Trubisky. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Intended for Allen Robinson. Incomplete. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And this ball is going to be touched out just shy of midfield. Tariq Cohen on the return. The Lions take over first. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. Frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing again, Stafford. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. 
They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. A gain of a yard. And it's third down. They'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. From the gun, Stafford. And this is going to be incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. Here's Matt Bosher now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Now Allen Robinson and company gearing up to go again on offense. He's north of 150 yards in this game. He's been doing his thing, hasn't he? That he has, and he's been enjoying himself. And it's the type of game that you get locked into a pretty good groove. May not be record-shattering, but it's the type of game that if you accumulate that throughout a season, you can be one of the top receivers in the game. See how much they incorporate him here on this drive. They're going to start to drive here on the ground with Patterson. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Alec Ogletree in on the stop. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Now a second down and six. They'll go to Montgomery to try to wind some clock. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. Now we're going to get a stoppage. There appears to be an injured bear on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. For the Lions, an extra DB in the game now here on third down. Out of the gun, Trubisky. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he's on to punt for Chicago. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. And this will be down just on the other side of midfield. The Lions offense set to take over. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. A gain of five brings up second and five at the 46-yard line. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. 
Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he's got this down to the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. Operating from the gun. Stafford. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. Khalil Mack in there yet again. What else is new? He continues to rewrite the record book in single season sacks. He's the NFL sack leader coming into the game, and now that's two more that he's added to his total. He wants some separation from spot one and two in that sack category. job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack it's second and 20 and that is incomplete a lot of force bearing down on him there he could not hang on it's third down as his old brain remembers when i see five wide receivers on the field as a defender i know the ball's coming out hot they expected it and got there and popped it free An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, Stafford. He's going to let it fly. And, oh, they almost had another one. They are all over the football in this game. Nearly another pick. Now fourth down. We've seen that the deep ball's been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. At their own 32. The Chicago offense set to get started. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When, when do you go to the backup, let him get some time? And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just going to tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, we, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they will take them out. But for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. This is caught inside the 15. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. So another score there. And often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. They are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And oh, can you believe it? He misses another one, his third so far. With a missed PAT in his rearview mirror, he goes back out to kick this one off. To return, here's Agnew. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. The Lions take over first and 10. At their own. So out now come the Lions. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. 
pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. Khalil Mack getting him once again his third sack of the afternoon. That right now, that's a defeated team out there. I think you can see it totally in their body language. Hands on hips, heads low. Uh, it's just been a struggle from the start. Yeah, this team has been thoroughly beaten right from the word go. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. Darion Johnson. A gain of 10 yards. And it's third down. They wound up getting nothing out of that second down completion. So now here's third and ten. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for Chicago, they continue to make their case for the playoffs as they move to 9-3. And, and they'll get to stay put for a few days as they'll host the Houston Texans next week. Meanwhile, for the Lions, it was a win they needed to turn the season around, but instead, they fall to 5-7. And, and they'll have a tough one at home next week against the Green Bay Packers. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.